Hello everyone, my name is John and in this video I will talk to you about Swarm Intelligence. We will talk about terminology, how people get ideas and what are the applications of a Swarm in real life autonomous robots. Swarm Intelligence is a field of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is the intelligence of machines or software and is a branch of general computer science that studies and develops intelligent machines and software. I believe everyone knows what a swarm is, but just to clarify things, I will give you the term from Wikipedia. Swarm behavior is a collective behavior exhibited by animals of similar size which aggregate together, perhaps smiling about in the same spot or maybe moving or migrating in some different direction. Now let's take a look of what swarm intelligence is. A term given by Eric Bonnebel in his book Swarm Intelligence from Natural to Artificial Systems, which is a best-selling book, says this. Swarm intelligence is the emergent collective intelligence of groups of simple agents. By the word agents, he refers to software and hardware agents. Agents, software agents, is a piece of software that is capable of taking simple de decisions to solve a problem. Usually agents solve problems by interacting with other agents or with their environment. The same goes for hardware agents, which they don't run inside a computer like a software does, but they run autonomously in our environment. We will start by seeing how a swarm of bats, called the flock, works to prote protect itself. Here you can see almost 1.5 million bats, creating a swarm that maneuvers around danger. The bats have very poor eyesight and they use echolocation in order to move around the three-dimensional world. Although the voice of each bat is so distinct that each and every one of them can identify which sound comes from the bat next to it and which sound comes from the bat that is further away. Using this formation, bats can protect each other and the group all together by communicating with one another, one another about obstacles, moving objects coming their way, and even predators. When a predator approaches, bats can easily communicate with each other and all together move away from the predator in a completely synchronized way. Sometimes a group of bats break from the swarm to make room for the predator to pass through and then they instantaneously rejoin. Now I want you to imagine this to be applied in a group of self-flying robots. A number of robots communicating with each other, devising a path which they choose to follow, or maybe following a preset path stored in their memory. Working with each other, they can create some really good formations. They can go through windows, avoid obstacles and many many more. Now simply imagine a person going skydiving. He opens his parachute but he gets carried by the wind and lands somewhere inside a forest. He lies there unconscious. Now we must send a search party to locate that guy. But as you know, humans make mistakes. We could create a group of cheap robots to assist the search party or even they could go alone and try to locate the missing person. They could easily maneuver inside the forest no matter how dense it would be and also avoid animals that might attack them. Now let's move on to a different type of swarm. Ants.
20 million individual ants make up a colony and they took a collective decision to relocate their home. Tasks have been divided by size. Others are carrying eggs and others are carrying larvae. It's a huge task to follow, but the 20 million individual ants that make up this colony relocate their home in just 48 hours. Worker ants have created a heavily fortified trail for others to follow. A trail that can stretch up to 100 meters. An equivalent to the human world in human sizes is 11 miles. As we all know, moving our home is a difficult task. And the ants task is filled with problems. So what happens when they meet an obstacle like a twig? First, they must identify the problem. The first to arrive send out pheromones to call for backup. When backup comes, they all lift and push in a synchronized manner, something even we humans find it difficult to do. With the combined forces of the ants, the twig is moved away and the road is obstacle free so ants can keep going on their journey. Now imagine a huge earthquake or a hurricane like Katrina. Buildings and trees fall into the streets roads are blocked. We could easily create a number of small robots and send them to search the streets for obstacles. They could autonomously search the roads, find obstacles and try to move them. If they are too heavy for them, they could call up for bug up. And when there is enough manpower, they could all together, in complete harmony, move the obstacle or in this case, a little child volunteer. Now let's talk about a different way in which ants can help us. In the natural world, ants wander randomly searching for food. Upon finding it, they return to the colony. As an ant walks, it leaves a trail of pheromones. Other ants smell these pheromones and are likely to follow the path taken by the original ant. These ants in turn leave their own trails. Over time, the most efficient trail is getting reinforced, while disused trails evaporate. Let's start with a graph are a starting point and of course an ant. Now let's give the ant something to search for. Let's keep in mind that an ant has no real conception of what a graph is and only has a limited field of view. It can only see the path that is available to it along the way. Now we have a graph with a predefined goal and an ant with a very limited cognitive power to search for that goal. Well, let's start searching. As the ant moves between nodes, it leaves a trail of pheromones, depicted here with arrows on the graph edges. This will be important later. At each node, the ant faces a decision and with some random chance, makes its selection. So how do the ants choose which path to follow? 
At each level, it sees a trail of pheromones at the edges. The more pheromones, the more attractive the path. In this case, B. A well-established trail will not always be selected, however. Probability is also a factor, and an ant might select a weak, a weak choice, like node C. Now let's look at the path a second ant takes. We can see that node B in the second ant diverges from the path established by the first ant. This leads to more exploration and the possible discovery of a shorter route. Now let's see what happens when we add a third ant and a fourth. In effect, longer trails are reinforced while shorter paths evaporate. In time, the preferred paths will be established and reinforced. When this happens, all the non-optimal paths will eventually fade away, leaving only the ideal solution. Now our ants are free to enjoy their desserts and we have solved the problem without any deep understanding of what the problem contains. Now let's see the algorithm in action. This is a more generalized problem. There are no exact paths like in a graph, but a more freely based open world for our ant agents to explore. Their purpose is to locate the red agent, which simulates their food, and move it to the blue agent which simulates their home. After some exploring, you can see them get in line. They are telling each other, hey, I am getting close. And one after the other gets closer and closer until they reach the red agent. This example also makes use of the lifting and pushing algorithm we saw before, as one agent does not have the strength to move it alone, it calls Wapaga from other agents. When they are enough, they start moving it towards the goal. A lot of people are afraid of the future of robots and artificial intelligence in general. A fear reinforced by movies like iRobot and Terminator. Those movies are only a figure of human imagination. The reason is that as more things evolve, the human brain does as well. Computers are evolving at the speed of light, but the truth is artificial intelligence is evolving, is evolving slower than a snail. It is too difficult of a field, and if it, but even if it were moving faster than it currently is, it could never surpass the human brain. Currently, not even simple tasks could be implemented in artificially intelligent robots, and given the rate the human brain evolves, robots could never match it, let alone surpass it. Well, that's all. Time to have some fun with our swarm robots. Thank uh -huh.